Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this nine part series, we're going to learn the basics of 3D and Blender. So what is Blender? Well, it's free for starters, and it can be used for things like 3D modeling, animation, and a million other things. And in this nine part series, we're going to cover user interface, moving, rotating, and scaling, the 3D cursor, extruding, insetting, beveling, and loop cuts, lighting, materials, cameras, rendering in Eevee, versus cycles and animation. So in this video, we're going to start at the very beginning, looking at the user interface and the other videos in this series, along with some other useful stuff is going to be down there in the description. And without further ado, let's get started. Radio, so we're now in Blender and we're going to start by clicking off the splash screen. We have our toolbar on the left that we'll come back to in the next lesson. And we have a contextual options bar along the top that shows a variety of different options for the selected object. And if we hop along the tabs, you can see we have quite a few options. Some are self-explanatory, some less so, but either way, we don't need to focus on this right now. Okay, so along the top, we have the workspace tabs. Now these enable us to switch between different workspaces very quickly and easily. And these workspaces are fully customizable, presenting you the relevant panels and tools, depending on what you're most likely to be doing in each of these different workspaces. Now for this video series, we're going to spend the majority of our time in the layout workspace, and we'll briefly hop into the shading workspace as well. We can also right click on a workspace and duplicate or delete it. And now let's jump back to the layout workspace. Now, if you hover your mouse over the edge of the viewport, you'll see the cursor change. You can do this on the bottom and right edge, right click, and you can split your workspace. And now I have two viewports. From the drop down at the top, I can change the editor type, and this enables you to fully customize your workspace. Now, if we switch back to the 3D viewport, what we can do on the right side of the screen is enable our camera preview. So now we get a real time preview of exactly how our scene is composed. And to go back to a single view, simply right click on the divider, select join areas, choose which one's dominant and click. Now, if you move your cursor right up into the corner, it will change to a plus icon. And this is a really quick way to split your workspace horizontally or vertically. In the top right corner, we have the outliner. You can see all of your objects, lights, and cameras here. These are all contained within collections, and you can think of these as layers and groups. And as you might expect, you can right click these for more options. And if you want to delete a collection and everything in it, you need to select delete hierarchy. Now the filter icon in the top right enables us to add some additional icons to our outliner. For example, the eye will hide and show an object, but if we click the camera on the right, this will determine if the object is included in the final render. Okay, moving down, we have a variety of different tabs and some of these we'll be using in this series. And honestly, there's so many awesome things you can do with the features contained in these tabs. And whilst it can be a little bit overwhelming at first, the more familiar you become with all of the different tabs, the more you can start to branch out and experiment with the different features contained within them. For example, if we select the modifiers tab here, you can see we have quite a few options, but don't worry about all that now. We'll play around with those features in future videos. We also have the physics tab, which is a lot of fun, and we can add constraints to things like cameras. So for example, we can get a camera to track a subject. Let's not worry about vertex groups now. Materials, we're going to be using this tab a lot. And lastly, we have texture painting. Now there's a lot of options here, so don't worry about this too much now. This is just a quick overview of all of the tabs, some of which we will be using. Now something else we can do is press N on the keyboard, and this brings out some extra tabs. And this is also where most of your options for any installed add-ons will appear. So for example, the item tab at the top enables me to control the location, rotation, and scale of the selected object. And I can press N again to minimize the tab. Just above this, we can choose how our scene is rendered and we can turn on things like X-ray mode that enables us to see through our shapes and can be helpful when making difficult selections. And some additional shading options are wireframe view, material preview, and then the final render preview. We can also choose to show or hide our overlays and from the drop down menu, we can choose which information is displayed. There's a few more options up here nothing really useful at this point. And we can also click the camera icon to look through our camera. And as soon as we move, it will take us out of that camera view. 
Now we can also go up to edit and down to preferences and there's a lot of options here but let's be honest it's not very interesting. Auto perspective and depth these are both very useful in my opinion and if we switch to system we can increase the undo count that's also very useful and it's also worth knowing how to install add-ons. So from that tab you can install add-ons or search for add-ons like node wrangler and then if I go to the bottom left corner, you can see I have auto save preferences checked. So I can just close this down now and all my changes are saved. And there we go, that wraps up part one. And in the next video, we're going to look at moving, rotating and scaling objects. So if you enjoyed this video, hey, why not subscribe for more, ring the bell and I'll see you in part two.